To access OneDrive, you navigate to OneDrive.com and either log in with your existing credentials or sign up for free to create a new account. Once you're logged in, you can see all the files available to you. And as you can see, I'm using OneDrive pretty extensively. Like in many other Microsoft applications online, you have access to the menu on the left and you can navigate through the menu to see what's available to you. In OneDrive, you also have some navigational options available to you in the upper right corner. For example, you can present documents by size, you can sort them by size, or you can rearrange them, or you can choose a different view. For example, sometimes I like the list view where you can see date, you can see the status, sharing status of the document, and you can see the size of the file. I'm going to switch back to the original tiles view to see all available documents and their preview. So what is OneDrive? OneDrive is, first of all, an online storage tool. You get up to 5 gigabytes of storage for free. It is also a document collaboration tool. You can share the document with other people and work on the same document together. It is also a backup tool. It allows you to backup your documents into the cloud so you have more than one copy available to you in case something happens to your desktop or laptop. OneDrive can also be used as free Microsoft Office tool. You can create, edit, or delete or do anything you would like with Microsoft Office documents. You can create or edit Microsoft Office files without paying the license fee. OneDrive is also a productivity tool. It allows you to organize your files for easy access and search. And also, you're able to access the files from anywhere, including laptops, desktops, or mobile devices. To create new folder in OneDrive, you click on the New button and then select New Folder. Then you type in the name and click Create. And you see that the new folder shows up right here on the front page. Now, if you're not happy with the name, you can right-click on the folder and select Rename. And you see my renamed folder is right here. It is called My Student Files. If you go inside this folder, it is obviously blank and empty. There is nothing in here. But what you can do now, you have a lot of new options here. You can create new subfolder. You can upload new documents, you can share this folder, move it to copy, rename, or create album from the folder, or embed it into the website. So what is the smart way to organize the data on your drive? One of the best ways, if you're a student, for example, is organized in a hierarchical structure. For example, what you see here is four tiers of the hierarchical structure, college, semester, courses, and lectures. For example, you might be taking classes at the technical college. You have two semesters, fall of 2020 and then spring of 2020. And then you have two courses in the fall of 2020, Introduction to Computing and Windows 10. And then for Introduction to Computing, you will have two lectures, one on September 2nd and another lecture is on September 9th. In the spring of 2021, you only have one class, which is called Soft Skills. And you didn't have any lectures for this class yet, but you can already pre-build the structure for this class. How would you organize this data in OneDrive? First step is to create a top folder, which we will call Technical College. Now let me build the rest of the hierarchy and you can see me doing it or skip to the next part. Because names of the lectures are very similar, I can just copy the name of the lecture when I click Create, and when I create a new folder, I can just paste it and change only the lecture ID. So this would be Lecture 2. As you can see, when I'm building my structure, it is represented here as a hierarchy. It starts with My Files, then goes to Technical College, then goes to Fall 2020, and I'm currently in Introduction to Computing section, where I have two lectures. To navigate within this hierarchy, we just need to click on the particular folder, and it takes us back. To go inside the hierarchy, we just click on the folder itself, and it takes us inside. Now I build the structure. Let's see how we can use it to take advantage of all the features of OneDrive. Once you have the structure in place, you can navigate to the lecture for September 2nd and create a new file here. We will create a new Word document here and take notes from the lecture. To do that, you just click on the New and Word document. Once you click on the Word document, it takes you to the Word Online and starts a brand new Word document. As you can see, we can also create Excel, PowerPoint, OneNotes, 
form survey, or just a plain text document. And the coolest part of it is that it's all going to be created right in the cloud, which means that it will be accessible from any one of your devices. Now, let's say you didn't have internet connection in your classroom, so you took notes during the lecture in the offline mode and saved the file right on your desktop. What you can do now, you can click Upload button, you will find that file that you created, and you will upload it into OneDrive. The coolest part of this is that you can upload not just single files, but also the entire folder. So you will be able to bring in and replicate the structure right from your desktop. So what are the cool features of OneDrive you might benefit from? The biggest one, I think, is creation or editing of Microsoft Office documents for free. You don't need any additional license to start working on Microsoft Office documents in OneDrive. Another big one is accessing files on mobile devices. You don't just access files on your desktop, Mac or Windows. You can also download apps on your iPhone or Android device and access your files there. You also get free storage up to 5 gigabytes. And when you think about this, this is a lot of space. You can put a lot of Word documents, a lot of pictures into that free space. So you are ready to start using it for free at no additional cost to you. Because you can work on the Microsoft Office documents, you can also share and collaborate Microsoft Office files with others. If you're working on a student project with a group of people, you can create a document on OneDrive, share the link with people, and work together on the project. Let's look at how you can share the document and work together on the same document in OneDrive. To do that, let's click on the New button and create New Word Document. So I created a new file and I picked the topic for my project. How to protect animals on the planet. Now I just need to give this document a name. And as a next step, I can just click Share and send this document via email to another person. You get a confirmation that your email was sent and you can now work together on the same document. One of the coolest features of working together on OneDrive document is that you can see changes made by another person real time. For example, let's assume that I type my first paragraph on my paper, but now another person will be making the changes as well. So you see the changes that they've made and you can see that who made the changes. The changes made are almost instantaneous. In this way, you don't even need sophisticated technology to work together. For example, you can talk on the phone and make changes to the document at the same time, and you will see changes real time. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.